aviators. From actors passing out on camera to underwater escape training and stunts so dangerous they're even banned in the Navy, here's how the best aviation film of all time came to be. Welcome to Explained. Tom Cruise is no stranger to high altitude stunts. He's flown in an F-14 fighter jet, been ejected out of it, and has hung upside down on the wing of a World War II aircraft. So not surprisingly, when they decided to make a sequel to this blockbuster 1986 film, he insisted that Top Gun Maverick had to be as real as possible. You just can't create this kind of experience unless you shoot it live. In order for us to accomplish this, we have the greatest fighter pilots in the world working with us. We're gonna show you what it's really like to be a Top Gun pilot. We worked with the Navy and the Top Gun School to formulate how to shoot it practically because if we're going to do it, we're going to fly in the F-18s. But flying in the cockpit of an F-A-18 is no walk in the park. These aircraft are capable of touching top speeds of Mach 1.8. To put that into perspective, that's like traveling 2,222 kilometers an hour. And another fun fact, Tom Cruise's footage from the F-14 cockpit in the first movie was the only one that was usable. That's because all his co-stars either passed out or had their eyes rolling in the back of their heads. So considering this, the cast this time around had to be trained even more intensely than the first movie. In fact, Tom personally overlooked the design of an all-encompassing training program. The training that those guys all put in, the four and a half to five months of training that they put in is necessary. It, you just can't pop up and... Uh, and show up and go Mach 3. They had to know what was coming up or else, number one, it wouldn't look good. And number two, they could put themselves into danger. To begin with, all the actors had to become accustomed to the fundamentals and mechanics of flights and G-forces. But how many Gs did you pull? Because you've done, you've been on a plane before, you pulled six Gs. So how, how many did you have oh, nice. to do on set? In training, we were getting up over eight Gs. Um, oh, man. I think close, close to nine. When we were in the F-18, we were pulling up to seven and a half, which was tough, but the toughest part really would be like how, how sustained they were. So when you were sustaining four Gs, but you were sustaining it for like a minute and a half, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes two minutes, almost the whole time, that was tricky. But what is G-force? Simply put, it's a measure of acceleration. One G is what we normally feel from the force of gravity, and it's what keeps us planted on the ground. The typical human body can withstand about 5 Gs, which is commonly experienced on your average roller coaster. But military pilots who perform maneuvers in high-performance aircraft train to experience 9 Gs or more. Pilots also have to wear anti-G suits and train in a device called the centrifuge that recreates the force you feel in an aircraft. And unless they undergo intense G-force training and learn to manage blood flow, they can experience G-lock or G-force-induced loss of consciousness not something you want happening while flying a killer jet. In fact, Alex flew in a Red Bull Air Race aircraft a couple of years ago, and it was absolutely insane. In addition to G-Force training, the actors learned drills for worst case scenarios. One of them was ejecting over water. So the Navy put them through a challenging underwater program, and this training was also far more intense than the one they casted for the original movie. Did you have to survive something in water? What was that? You had to uh, training just in case you needed to eject uh, from the fighter jet? Yeah, so we had to pass the Naval Aviator Overwater Survival Training Course. Um, it's kind of a bunch of different things. It's a written test, and then you, you get in the pool and you do a bunch of different exercises. So they took the uh, cockpit and shot it into the water, and then you have to escape out of that. And so they do stuff like hold you underwater for a while and, and then uh, see if you can float and, you know, fun stuff. But the worst thing is you do this exercise, it's called the dunker, and they strap you to a chair and they blindfold you and then you're, Ready. they start submerging this device in water. Um, so you're strapped to a chair, you're blindfolded, and now you're underwater, and then they flip you upside down very slowly. Once we got through that, I think we felt like we kind of earned our stripes a little bit and that we were now worthy of, of doing this flying. Then there's the whole physiology side of it, which was another day of, 
of training where we're put into a pressure chamber and taken up to 25,000 feet, then you remove your oxygen mask to see what hypoxia is all about. Okay, now the low side of the chamber only. Reach up and hold the mask tight to your face with one hand with the other. Release one of your retention fittings, but keep the mask up to your face. Okay, then when I say release, I want you to let go of your mask and turn your oxygen supply off at the console. Okay, turn it off and begin your demonstrations. Six to seven, turn face each other. Okay, this is naval aviation, gentlemen. There's something they don't understand about basic patty cake here. Remember, I don't want to see how long you can last. I want you to experience some of the symptoms of hypoxia and then take the corrective action. Okay, uh, seven has had it. There's a little tetany there. Mask to the face, oxygen on. Once the actor's physical abilities were tested and pushed to the limits, they started flying in the actual aircraft. But they couldn't just jump to F-18s immediately. They had to be eased into them. First, they started out in single-engine airplanes to build up their spatial awareness inside the aircraft. Next, they were put in L-39s for aerobatic training to feel what it was like in a jet. Then from there, they graduated to the F-18 Super Hornets. And while we see Tom Cruise take off from the aircraft carrier that's presumably the USS Abraham Lincoln, it's rumored that the other actors took off from a base nearby. The actors also had to learn cinematography and understand what looks good on screen. They learned how to operate the cameras and how to direct themselves in the jets. In fact, the teams worked closely with Sony digital cameras to ensure they could effectively capture the gut-churning in-flight action. We're working with a brand new camera system that allows us to put six IMAX quality cameras inside the cockpit with the actors. Some of the aircraft in the movie include a CGI Sukhoi Su-57, a concept fighter known as Dark Star, the F-18 Super Hornet, and Tom Cruise's personally owned P-51 Mustang. Combine these jets with all the pilot training and you're guaranteed some crazy action scenes. One of them is when Maverick sneaks up from below on a couple of Super Hornet pilots in training for a strike. Experts and former naval pilots say even the Blue Angels who fly Super Hornets don't perform such dangerous maneuvers in their choreographed routine. But were the actors in any real danger? Uh, other than sort of vomit being liber liberally sprayed around the, the back seat, I think uh, that was probably the closest of calls. When you're talking about an 80 some odd million dollar aircraft that is funded by the US taxpayers, they're, they're very, they tend to be very careful uh, with those and not run them into things. So uh, yeah, that was, they were all, it looks very dangerous, but it was all done very safely. So after all that high altitude, gut wrenching action, one thing is for certain, this movie will have you at the edge of your seat and it's gonna inspire a new generation of Top Gun fans. Let us know what you think of the movie in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.